All right, that was weird. Let's see what happens. And you can start recording and do the intro. Roll it. Hey, welcome to the Bra- welcome to the Browns. Hi. Hi. I guess we can let our patrons see our bloopers too. <laughs> There's a reason I don't introduce this. All right, let's show. do it together. No, that's weirder. Okay, we'll go. Can you can you can you do it? <laughs> hey, welcome to the Browns. The show. <laughs> Okay, okay. Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Andrew Brown. I'm Mr. Brown. And this is Conversations with Brown. Yes. And I'm doing this intro under duress. <laughs> I thought it would be a good switch of pace to let you do the intro. Yeah, you did think that. I did think that. Yeah. Well, this is Conversations with the Browns. And this is. Um... <laughs> See, you knew it was bad. You had to do <laughs> no, the intro. No, I did. No, I'm just doing it. I don't have a pre planned intro every time. Yeah. I kind of just go kind of just riff it that's what you call it riff right that's a riff i just riff on it Mm -hmm. well everybody thanks for joining us for the episode of conversation with the browns i am mr brown she is there i already said my name andrea brown i do do that every time i guess (laughs) but thank you for joining us (laughs) we're excited to uh, do this podcast it's a lend our voice and our idea is to have more conversation and less declarations we just want to share our life with you so thank you for joining us and this episode, we're going to talk about well, something we kind of hinted to in the last episode. If you haven't the last episode, go ahead and visit lifewiththebrowns.com. Check out the last episode. And also, you can listen to us on podcasts anywhere you get your podcast outlets or any outlets you get your podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts, just search Conversations with the Browns. Last episode, we talked about the idea of the amp wheel. Um, and I think what the amp wheel leads me to is a place of clarity with this question, this important question. The most important question you can ask yourself. That's kind of oversell. Yeah, that was kind of oversell. <laughs> it's an important question. I think it's a clarifying question for me. And that question is, I'll give it to you right up. Talk about our sponsor. Our sponsor oh, for this podcast. that was podcast. Just dirty. That was dirty. <laughs> this podcast is partially sponsored by, in part sponsored by, or sponsored by, in part, Sutherland DDS. They are our dentist. We really like them. And they like to see you smile. So check them out. One of the things Dr. Sullivan told me one time and I forgot, he says he does not want to see me under his drill. So he wants to motivate you and educate you, take care of your teeth. So he doesn't have to drill you. No one wants to drill. No one wants a cavity. No one wants a root canal. So they are there to help you, to educate you and to motivate you, take care of your own teeth. So visit them if you want that kind of dentist at yourreadingdentist.com. Again, their website is yourreadingdentist.com. They will take care of you because they love your teeth over at Sutherland DDS. I would say... They care about you as a person, so they take care of your team. Well, they I don't lo- know that they love your teeth. They love to see you smile yeah. in two ways. Did I say they love your teeth? Uh-huh. Well, that was from my podcast we did with them. <laughs> so it just stuck in my head because they laughed so much about it. They love to see you smile yeah. because they want to educate you, motivate you, and take care of you when they come. When you come, because they, mm-hmm. they care about you. I've had a lot of bad dentist experiences. A lot of people have. <laughs> and this is not one of them. Yeah. They're really great. So check them out at yourreadingdentist.com. So now I want to tell you what the what one of the most important questions I've used lately in my own life to bring me a source of clarity, and it is this. What is mine to do? This question, I said it right, right? What mm-hmm. is mine to do? What is mine's, not mine's. What is mine's to do? I don't know what why is I mine to do? You need to stop reading my notes. <laughs> what is mine to do is been a clarifying question for me, and I got that question from you. You kept saying it in your own life. What is mine to do? And it just stuck with me because I think it is such a good question because I find myself getting on the amp wheel, getting excited, getting motivated about a lot of different things. And even the fact that I am a visionary by nature, I am just have these idea, my idea factory, which drives you crazy. Sometimes I have all these ideas and some of them are really good ideas and things that could be very valuable. But what is mine to do? Can I do everything? The answer is no. And I think I know where Sophia got her idea to save the whales, to be a veterinarian, to be a doctor, <laughs> to be to all the things Sophia wants to be. I think that's curiosity by by nature. But I think she gets it from me because I want to do everything. I want I want to do everything that I can do to make this world a better place and to make money. Right. <laughs> um, I want to make influence and I want to make income. And so I look at the I've always been this entrepreneur mindset, like 
from a kid, I was selling candy at school. You know the story. I was selling penny candy because I lived in the hood and I could buy a box of candy Sour Patch Kids from the guy that worked at the, the corner store. He sell them to me wholesale. I go out to school. I bag them at night. Had these little baggies. I would sell candy to kids at school. Start selling noun laters at school. Then I upped it to t-shirts. I was selling t-shirts out my van when I was a teenager. Uh, I always had this entrepreneur mindset and I want to do everything. But this question brought me great clarity in my life and it's, it's continued to do it because I'm still that way. But what is mine to do at this moment has been a great question. So let's talk about where the question came from for you and how it's impacted your life. Well, and I just want to make a note that one of the reasons I think this is such a great question is because it has been so helpful for both of us. And I kind of, I am the person that just needs a nap just now listening to you talk. <laughs> <laughs> listen to all my ideas. Just listening to all of your ideas makes me want a nap. And generally, I mean, as a kid, I often would, there'd be like a giant party at my house and someone would come in and tell me that like I would be in my bedroom reading a book. Uh, and I was constantly told I was being antisocial because of it. But the, so like the whole point though is we are very different people. And this question has still been really helpful for, for both, of, both us. of us. Me in clarifying what are the things that are, worth putting down my book and getting up from my nap for I have to ask the question what is worthy of me picking up a book <laughs> yeah and where do you where do I need to put some more momentum and more energy and where do you need to slow down the energy and mm -hmm. um, you know back off so I think that it's been helpful for both of us I actually this is not my question I learned this from Suzanne Stabile she is probably well known currently for writing the road back to you She's an Enneagram teacher. And we'll put the link in the description. Mm -hmm. She wrote, so she wrote The Road Back to You with, um, with a co-author, Ian Morgan Cron. Um, but Suzanne is, has become one of my favorite Enneagram teachers that the Enneagram will be a whole different Now, thing. some people are out there listening going, what is the Enneagram what? That's what I, when you first started talking about the Enneagram, I was like, the Enneagram what? Because it sounds like an enema, in a sense, <laughs> which is not even close. The but Enneagram you, has like taken over the world by storm. So peace, peace, most people know what it is. I don't know if most people do, but I actually would not necessarily recommend just like Googling it because it has become so popular that there are a whole bunch of people and channels and Instagram things just um, kind of giving you the, like they've turned it kind of into a meme and a joke. And it does then end up coming across as a way to label and kind of make fun of people or joke about stuff, which is like, it's fine. It's fine to laugh about it. But I don't think that that actually helps you. If you really have not heard of it or are interested, I don't think that that's a great place to start. I would really recommend Suzanne's podcast. She has a podcast called The Enneagram Journey. And then there's also a podcast that they made as promo for the book. All right, we got to make sure to remember to put these in the show really notes because I, I will forget them. Put them in the show notes. But anyway, so this question came from Suzanne. She actually talks about it as it being important for her. But I have found it helpful for me, and we have different personalities. We are definitely different people. But I have found this question to be so helpful for me in asking what is what is mine to do, partly too, and being married to you because you come, when we come to the table together to work on something, you come with so much. And I'm the sort of person that's like, I just need three things on my checklist. Because if I have 16, I'm going to look at it and be overwhelmed and not do any of them. So, and I just have such a hard time prioritizing it. I just get overwhelmed. When you have 27 ideas to do, I feel like I need to help you accomplish every single one. That's one thing I want to say too. I think because of your personality and the way you're wired, you have been such a blessing to me because you want to help me succeed. You want to help these ideas flourish. You want them to work. But even asking this question is helpful in getting those things done. So I don't want you to feel like you're, you're a killjoy because you're not. You help bring some clarity because if you can't do it, you only can do a three. That means we have to find other people to do some of these ideas or I mean, get rid of some of the ideas. So all the ideas aren't bad necessarily, but what is yours to do it brings clarity. And then for me, it says, what can I do? And if this is going to be done, do we need to bring someone else into the picture to do some of these things? I need mean, that. <laughs> but I, don't, I guess I guess what I'm saying I, I want if someone's listening to this, I don't want them to feel like you were looking down on me for having so many ideas. And then I'm looking down on you for not wanting to do all the ideas. I think we're gifted in different ways because if I have 27 ideas and one of them is really great, if I don't have the, the, 
I'm not I don't have the ability or the permission to think about all those ideas. I might not get to the one that's really good. Because I think sometimes we try to shut each other off because we're not wired the same way. So I'm, it's okay for me to have all those ideas, but it may not be all for you to do. And I don't want to put that pressure on you that you have to do all these 27 ideas, but I, and, nor do I want you to feel like you have to come up with 27 ideas either because that's not yours to do. You're not the person with all the ideas. That's me. You probably should note that 27 is my favorite exaggeration number. <laughs> and it is known in this family that if I use the number 27, it is an emotional statement, not a numeric. That is, we should statement. do a podcast about that. How we, some things we've learned from each other because like 27 is an odd number, but it is it's your an emotional. Important, it's an important number to me. It's yeah, really good. Because there's not 27 uh, pairs of socks on the floor. And you probably have never come to the table with 27 ideas. It's an emotional <laughs> statement. All right, go ahead. But I'm sorry. I think that the piece that I agree with, which is maybe part of what you're saying, is that it has been helpful for me in um, clarifying, even if I am participating in something that is really something that you're bringing the energy to, it's your project, and I'm just contributing to it. It is has been helpful for me in fig- in navigating partnership and working together and... Um, that whole relationship, it has been so helpful for me to clarify what is mine to do and be okay walking away from the table knowing you still have 26 things left that I'm not helping you with, that I'm not, that I can still support you and be for you and know um, it is, it is fine if there is only one piece on the table that is mine to do to show up and be faithful to that. Mm-hmm. And honestly, for most of my, most of the pieces where this has been helpful actually has, nothing to do with your work and what you bring to the table. It's been, for me, it's shown up in all sorts of ways, in parenting, in relationships, in, um, I actually can't think of a single area of life where stopping and asking that question has not been helpful for me. It's can been I, really... Can you give me one about parenting? Like how in an example of asking that question in the midst of parenting your kids has been very helpful? Um, let me think. Well, I'll give you one that okay. I thought of right away is sometime cleaning up for them because we want the how we both value a house and things being in the right place. But I think sometimes it's good for them to do it themselves and make sure they get that muscle memory <laughs> of putting things back or just the idea that they are part of this family too. And they just can't just throw stuff around because sometimes it'll be easier for me just to pick it up. And, and, and sometimes I do. And sometimes we do clean up with our kids, but I want to be able to train them that they have, they're responsible to, and so sometimes that, is that mine to do? Is that for me to do at this moment? Or is it really for Evan to pick that up himself? And even though it may be hard sometimes, because sometimes I feel like I'm being too hard on him. But guess what? I want to help train him too and not just go for the expediency of the house is clean, this is picked up, but saying, hey, hey, come pick this up. You, you, but it's hard. I'm tired. I know, but you did this. So what is mine to do? It's, that's not mine to pick up. That's Evan's. And I need to help him do that. So that's helped me. That's interesting because if I was going to use that same example, again, it's why I think this question is so powerful because it's helpful for us. But like in that example, we're using it in very different ways. So for me, if that was the example parenting in our house and how we want it, that's something that I, because a calm, tidy, peaceful environment helps me think I have a really hard time thinking straight if the house is a wreck. Um, So that's important to me. And asking what is mine to do is a way for me to, like we talked in our previous episode, get off the amp wheel of this just internal thing that can happen in me. And often I just turn everything inward. So I end up in this cycle of feeling like a failure as a mom, feeling like just all, all sorts of things. And asking what is mine to do helps me back up and say, figure out what actually matters to me. And what piece of this can I contribute? So sometimes, so it actually looks a lot of different ways. Sometimes it means, man, this really matters to me and there's a piece here that I haven't yet trained my kids um, in. I, I could train them to care for something better. I could set a rhythm in our family that would help this not be such an issue. But um, I just haven't put the energy there. Maybe I've done too much of the I've done the work myself, but in the, you know, different way. So it's not that it's like going to be easier. The problem is often training our kids to 
care for something or to participate in chores or whatever, that's more work than me just picking the thing up by myself. Um, but if this is something that matters to me, asking what is mine to do really helps me step back and figure out where, how a path forward. But it also, sometimes it has helped me clarify, like with our kids, there have been spaces where I've realized this this living room being clean matters to me, and so I've actually rearranged some of the things. So I have agreements with the kids of there's a couple buckets where if their thing is out and I don't want it to be there, I chuck it in the bucket and it's on them to find a new home We're for supposed it. To go right. um, so, so some of that is just knowing how much of this is for my children, how much of this is for me, and it helps me clarify um, what kind of action is actually helpful right. rather than just spinning on a this is frustrating and spinning on. Okay, time out, time out. I'm going to call a quick time out because we're going to break this episode up in two parts. We've already finished recording it, but it ran a half an hour. And I want to make sure that we can give you stuff in bite sized pieces. So if you got like a 15 minute commute to work, if you're even working outside the home these days, but. Um, you can listen to it in bite-sized chunks because sometimes listening to podcasts hard to find your place where you left off. So join us for the next episode, which will continue this conversation. And I'm not going to tease you like I did at the beginning. I'm going to post this the same day. So this is posted on the same day. You can listen to part one and part two of this episode, asking the question or actually sharing with you. One of the most important questions I've had to ask myself lately is what is mine to do? So go ahead, go ahead right now. Listen to part two of Conversations with the Browns and you want more information about what we do, you can visit lifewiththebrowns.com, lifewiththebrowns.com.